you mentioned you know controversy around cause and effect. I I have to say that I, th I I think that's been laid to laid to bed, right? Because one of the things we did is the CDC had already put out fact sheets saying the evidence suggested cause and effect, but no one listened because the CDC puts out fact sheets, but they don't necessarily have the same promotional capacity or or mandate that uh, that other groups have. And so then I I just happened to be at um, the Tau Consortium meeting, you know, just trying to you know get smarter on all the real geniuses around Tau. And the paper came out, and I started sharing it with people, and they were saying, "Oh, this is great! This is this." You know, I w you know, some of them were like, "I was already convinced." Other ones were like, "Give me, give it a read." And I realized, like, you know, it's one thing for us to say it's not, but the NINDS at that point had said associate on their website, and I thought, you know, I, I suspect that they, you know, Walter Korshetz had said in the past he believed cause and effect was established in 2012. Who was the head of NINDS? So I said, so I got, I went around this meeting and got all you know, 40 of the world's best Tau experts, super well-respected people. And I said, do you agree with our that cause and effects been established beyond any reasonable doubt? And and they signed it. And we sent this letter to NINDS. And then a few months later, they, they mentioned that we've updated our website. That's all I said. We've updated our website. <laughs> <laughs> and they had the yeah, cause effects yeah. established. So I figured, I figured, if we got CDC and NINDS aligned. Who is left to question this, mm -hmm. right? And I and I was very fascinated that last month the Australian Football League, who had been the biggest critic of this, if you know the whole Paul McCrory yeah. background mm -hmm. and all that, said in their statement to the Australian Senate because they're having hearings about this because mm -hmm. they think this is a problem, they said they believe they agree with the NANDS statement. So I'm like, all right, the dominoes are falling. So the people who are still left saying I don't believe in cause and effect, I question what you know, how are they? What logic are they using to say that? Mm -hmm. and, I th and I would argue that whatever evidence they're trying to cite to say that's not cause effects proven, it's flawed. That there's some misunderstanding in their understanding because the people way smarter than me are now saying cause effects established. And I just put together, again, with, with uh, 14 great co-authors, like just a, a review for something that I already believed before I did the review, but now I believe more strongly. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't believe in cause and effect, or I know you don't represent um, other you know, scientists and people that might not believe in it, that is established just yet, but what would you want to see from the evidence? What do you think those people would want to see from the evidence in order to establish that causal relationship? Uh, I, it's, it's not that I don't believe in cause and effect. So um, it, it's, you know, I think the ideal so just to respond to you know what you were, uh, and, I, and I didn't realize that you didn't, so I wasn't trying to say. No, I no, no, no. I don't, I'm, I'm not even <laughs> saying that no. he doesn't, but he's very familiar, I think, with both camps. Yeah, right? I think it's an important thing to really kind of think through this and the repercussions. So you said, let's you know get this cause and effect uh, consensus, you know, on the books and and in the public, so that there's really no question for prevention standpoint. And then, uh, which I, I agree with all of that completely, and if, we, if we're there, that's great. You know, that's a major milestone. And uh, I mean, no matter what, I support the general idea because hitting your head, as we all can imagine, just from a common sense standpoint, repeatedly is, it doesn't sound like a good idea. But the question that I really kind of keep coming back to is, when does it happen? How many of the hits do you need? And what does the clinical course actually look like? Because some people live to 80 and have stage one, two, you know, and some people um, have 15 years of uh, NFL exposure and don't have CTE. And so there are so many questions there. And, and then the challenge of actually correlating pathology retrospectively to clinical data is, is a major gap in understanding the course. Whereas Alzheimer's disease, where we've got some biomarkers, we've got a good signature of, of brain atrophy and, and PET abnormalities and CSF findings where you can say, okay, this person has probable diagnosis and the phenotype looks like this. There's about four or five of them. And we can be fairly certain and treat accordingly. Um, I just don't feel, obviously, I think we'd all agree we're not there with CTE. What's between us and getting there? That's one question. And then two, what are people doing with this cause and effect knowledge now? You know, we're kind of even more strongly saying, hey, head injuries are bad uh, and you could be doomed, I think is one, one interpretation people are getting from this. But I don't know if that's true. 
that you could be doomed. A head injury is definitely I, the head, but yeah. Well, I think some people, some people, it's absolutely life destroying. You know, and, and again, these are the people who reach out to us. These are people in their forties, fifties who are, uh, you know, I, I mean, just remember, there's, a, I, a, a surgeon reached out to me, forty two, played college football, who couldn't remember the steps in his surgery anymore, and he mm -hmm. stepped away from his practice. Mm -hmm. Like when medical, yeah, and that that. And that's not the only medical doctor that reaches out. I just had to deal with well, an Ivy League medical doctor who, same problem. Like, so I think like, some people really have their lives, you know, again, the worst cases are, are not at that co as common as the more Alzheimer's type of dad was started getting a little weird in his 50s, 60s and w whatever. So, um, but to go back to the, the bigger picture question, um, which is, you know, trying to figure out like how many and all that stuff, I think, and then, the, and then addressing the clinical. From the how many part, like I don't find that question that interesting, and and like the why are there some stage ones in at eighty? I think we've seen from all of the diseases, like if, if we just, uh, smoking and lung cancer provides a great way to understand a lot.